Hello, I'm Dr. Trevor from physicsthisweek.com. Today, let's talk about vectors that happen to have negative components. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to find the components of any vector that points into any quadrant. You should also be able to determine when a component might be negative, and you should also be able to find the angle of a vector when it points into any particular quadrant. Okay. So previously we added two vectors together using either the tip to tail or the parallelogram method. Now we're going to break one vector into two parts and these parts are going to align along the X and Y axis or at least be parallel to the X and Y axis. So you can see here using the parallelogram, excuse me, using the tip to tail method, if I take this vector that points along the X axis and this one that's parallel to the Y axis, that forms a right triangle with my original vector. So that those two pieces are the components of the vector. Now, if I prefer, I can also draw lines back to the Y axis and project it up along. Uh, so it's parallel to the X axis. And that particular diagram looks a little bit more like the parallelogram method. In this case though, because the, uh, the pieces, or excuse me, the components are perpendicular to each other, that parallelogram happens to be a right rectangle or just a rectangle. Okay, so when we have a vector that actually points into one of the uh, other quadrants other than the first quadrant, in this case, you see we've got a vector that points uh, at 127 degrees away from the x-axis. When I look at the components for that, my AX component is going to be negative while my AY component is going to be positive. So if I go back and use that full 127 degree angle, I've got AY is equal to A sine theta, or AY is equal to 5.0 meters sine 127 degrees, giving me AY is uh, positive 3.99 meters. If I look at the X component, I've got AX is equal to A cosine theta, and AX is equal to 5.0 meters cosine 127 degrees. And when I evaluate that, I get AX is equal to negative 3.01 meters. And I'm getting that negative sign directly from my calculator. Now, the problem with this is sometimes we don't know what that angle is measured all the way back to the uh, first quadrant or to the X axis. Sometimes we do though, but you wanna be careful. Now, the way I usually like to do this is instead of looking at that angle, I like to look at the right triangle formed by AX, AY, and the vector A itself. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so if we draw that, those components on there and we look at this new angle phi that's showing up, now I'm going to use that angle and I can figure out what that angle is by using 180 degrees minus 127 degrees, giving me 53 degrees. So angle phi is 53 degrees. That's the angle that I'm going to use. So when I look at the Y component, I get AY is equal to A sine phi or AY is equal to 5.0 meters sine 53 degrees, giving me AY is positive 3.99 meters just like I got in the previous step. Now, if I look at the AX component, I've got AX is equal to A cosine phi. AX is equal to 5.0 meters cosine 53 degrees when I put in the numbers. And if I throw that into my calculator, I get AX is equal to 3.01 meters, but I've thrown in a negative sign. I've manually inserted that negative sign because I know that that AX points along the negative A, or excuse me, the negative X direction. So you can see that manual insertion is the final step that I need to do. My calculator doesn't tell me that. Okay, so let's suppose I know what the vector is. I know what the components are, but I want to figure out what the angle is. So in the first quadrant, it's just like we've done before. So I've got sine theta a is equal to a y over a and if i take the inverse sine of both sides i've got a y excuse me theta y is equal to sine to the negative one which is the inverse sine of a y over a 
And if I put the numbers in, and I'll assume that the units are meters here, uh, but since they cancel out, I'm just going to drop them right away. I've got theta A is equal to the inverse sine of three over five. And when I pop that in my calculator and evaluate it, I get theta A is equal to 36.9 degrees. Now, if I look at angle B, or excuse me, vector B, and look at its components, if I know what the size of the components are, and I start to evaluate this, I've got sine theta B is equal to BY over B. When I take the inverse sine of both sides, I've got theta B is equal to sine to the inverse sine, excuse me, of BY over B. And when I throw in my numbers, the Y component is four. So I've got theta B is equal to sine to the negative one of four over five. And I evaluate that and I get theta B is equal to 53.1 degrees. Now the problem with that is theta B on my diagram is measured back from the X axis. So I'm getting a number that is less than 50, excuse me, less than 90 degrees, which tells me that something is incorrect. Now let's take a moment and move on and we'll come back and look to see why that funky angle is showing up in there. If I look at the X component and take cosine of theta B is equal to BX divided by B, and then do theta B taking the inverse cosine of both sides gives me theta B is equal to cosine to the negative one or inverse cosine of BX over B. And when I throw in the negative three for BX, I've got theta B is equal to the inverse cosine of negative three over five. And I evaluate that, I end up with theta B is equal to 126.9 degrees. Now that is closer to the angle that I think it should be. And what is happening here is if I take a look at 126.9, and 53.1 degrees, add those two together, they add very nicely up to 180 degrees, within rounding at least. So notice here that theta B that I did want to use the Y component really wasn't theta B. It was actually this phi B that's showing up here. Okay, so you have to be really, really careful as you're doing this with your vectors because it's in the wrong quadrant. It's not in the first quadrant anymore. So I'm not finding theta B, I'm actually finding phi B. If I needed to know the angle back from the original X axis, then I'd have to do a little bit of math to figure that out. Okay, so the problem is your calculator doesn't know what quadrant you're in. So you wanna be careful of how you interpret its results. Keep this in mind as you're looking at all of these types of problems. The problem is it goes back to that something you learned in pre-calculus that we called the unit circle. So in the first quadrant, the sine of theta is positive, the cosine of theta is positive, and the tangent of theta is positive, as long as I stay between zero and 90 degrees. If I look into the second quadrant, in this quadrant, the sine of theta is positive, the cosine of theta is negative, and the tangent of theta is also negative. Now notice in my picture, I've got the theta phi, or excuse me, the theta, excuse me, the phi, yes, I've got the phi listed. The theta would be the angle all the way back to the x-axis. And that's going to be true as I go all the way around the unit circle here. If I go into the third quadrant, this one's a little more goofy. I've got sine theta is negative. The cosine of theta is negative. But since the tangent is the sine over the cosine, in this case, tangent theta is going to be positive because I've got a negative divided by a negative. And then if I flip around into the fourth quadrant, I've got the sine theta is negative, I've got the cosine theta is positive, and the tangent of theta is negative. So notice that the reason these sines and cosines are becoming positive and negative is because the components are positive and negative. In the first quadrant, everything's positive, so everything's positive. In the second quadrant, the x component is negative. That's what makes the tangent theta negative. In the third quadrant, both the 
x component and the y component are negative, which leads to the tangent being positive. And the same thing holds for the uh, fourth quadrant if you look at the details in there. Okay, so in review, you can make yourself or make things a little easier for yourself if you draw a right triangle for the particular vector that you're looking at, and then just add the signs in for directions at the end. And this is going to be true in all of the different quadrants. Just be careful how you draw things in, make sure you label things properly, and add the signs in according to whether the vector is pointing up, down, left, or right. So hopefully this has been helpful. Good luck in your physics class and have a good day.